Yep. Hey. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Chelsea. Hi, everyone. My name is Dattaraj. I'm the chief data scientist at uh, Persistent Systems. And uh, thanks very much, Neo Poje, Sudhir, Chelsea, and the team for this invite. And I have uh, Sarashiv with me, who is our uh, senior data scientist working on Neo4j, knowledge graphs, etc. And I'll, I'll let him also talk about his introduction. Uh, so uh, this, uh, what we'll talk about today is basically uh, a way we have applied large language models uh, and generative AI uh, with Neo4j to call something that we call a uh, build an offering that we call NeoGen AI. And the idea is uh, we'll take an ontology guided approach for loading business data into graph databases. So let, let's get started with what exactly is the business problem that we're solving. Uh, next slide, Sadashiv. So uh, we, we, we are persistent. Uh, we are a global uh, digital engineering uh, leader uh, working very close, closely with our customers in BFSI, healthcare, uh, industrial, et cetera. So some of our customers, mainly in the insurance domain and even life sciences, healthcare, uh, they have this, I mean, most of the customers have this uh, repeating problem that uh, the data is in multiple uh, spaces, uh, even though the data may be structured in databases, data warehouses, it may be in multiple tables, the, uh, the fields are not matching, uh, the data schema is not consistent. Uh, and then the business knowledge often is stored in unstructured form in documents. I'm sure this is a problem in every industry. Uh, and there is no standard language for conducting business. So these... Uh, uh, domains, the BFSI healthcare domains, have uh, standard ontologies. Like in uh, BFSI and insurance domain, there is something called FIBO, which is a financial ontology, business ontology. But uh, the data is not always connected to that. So the key problem that we are addressing in this uh, session would be in this NeoGen AI offering is how do you get the right data in the right form at the right time to the right person? So basically taking your data uh, converting into information and then taking the next step to convert into knowledge. And uh, in this case, we will be presenting it as a knowledge graph, capturing these relationships into uh, uh, into Neo4j so that we have a structure to the data as well as the relationships. And this helps uh, present the data in the right form and make business decisions. Our next slide, Sarasho. So this is the uh, problem. So what we have come up with is a, a very uh, a, a high level offering called knowledge platform. And for knowledge platform, these are the facets. First, you create knowledge. So this is where the unstructured data comes in. You take unstructured data and uh, extract entities, relations, and we have an offering around that. Here, we'll focus on the second part, which is compiling knowledge. So knowledge exists in multiple databases. They may not always be matching and following an ontology. So we'll try to connect them to the ontology, use generative AI. The generative AI is very good at understanding like uh, uh, the table structures and trying to uh, create dynamically queries, both in uh, SQL as well as Cypher, and uh, use those queries to query data from a SQL and load data in a Neo4j. And that's exactly what we are using. We'll, uh, and uh, because it, it's uh, guided by a prompt engineering, we we'll use the ontology to drive our prompt engineering. And Sadashi will show a demonstration of how this actually works, and you can compile data and map it to an ontology and load. And that's the second st stage of the knowledge platform. But just for completion, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the overall offering. The third aspect, now once the data is there, both uh, from a structured data in a, in a knowledge graph, unstructured data, which we may store in a vector database or some uh, uh, enterprise search tool. Second aspect is querying. So we can use large language models to understand the data model in this case, it could be driven by an ontology and build queries on the fly based on natural language instructions. And the final aspect is how do you perform the analysis? So this goes into very advanced areas like we could look at uh, not just simple search and question answering, it could get into uh, drug drug interaction. So for a pharma company, we are looking at using a knowledge graph to predict if two drugs will interact with each other. We have published some uh, research in that space. Uh, for insurance areas, we can look at fraud detection, we can look at comparison, et cetera. So that's what we'll show in this uh, demonstration. So I'll, I'll hand it over to Sadashiv for 10 minutes. He can walk through the demo. Uh, uh, so Sadashiv, just take it over. Yeah, sure. So uh, I will start with a demo. So this is, uh, yeah. OK, so this is this is a, a landing page. This is a tool which uh, any SME can use to kind of uh, start off with 
converting his ontology into a graph and eventually you can go to a knowledge graph so i will so what we start here with is you can put some put some domain here and then you know you can put like a simple uh, uh, when i enter the entities which are which are there and then i will then you can create the relationships between them you say that this insurer has uh, raises like claims and so on like right? so this is kind of helps you to kind of create an ontology uh, you can save this ontology and you can update it as on so what i have done here is i have a predefined uh, it, i have put this ontology i save this ontology to just to save the time so that you know, i can quickly load it so this is like my complete ontology uh, it, it involves an insurance area, um, area where you know I'm looking at the different partners, the insurers, the products which they are giving, what kind of policies are being there, and claims raised by the by the insurance provider, you know, and and who are the insurance provider. Right? So this is, this is the ontology. Um, I once when I now when I say create, right, what happens in behind here is it uses the uh, this ontology is saved in a JSON format, and then this JSON format gets converted into a, into a new for j schema. And it what it will do is then once it is converted to new for the schema, we will this is, this is a schema which has been created, and we will load some synthetic data using now this is where using the first LLM like uh, first uh, shorted LLM. So we are trying to look at that schema and try to create some synthetic data. Now why we are creating synthetic data is just to you know the the user can quickly look at and then see that okay this is what he is looking for. So you will see that the, the policy are like policy one two three does not make much sense because this is synthetic data but for an sme who is trying to look at uh, creating the a structured format of creating the knowledge platform why ontology is for him this will be like a, a trailer you will quickly see that yeah things are looking good and if he wants to go back and kind of update something he can just go back and update it so let's say this is this is quite, quite good doing good and now what i will do is i will load actual uh, data we have few records here uh, for example like this one this is like a uh, worker compensation data, a claims data where you know there are um, there is the details of similarly matching to what the ontologies we have created, like what is the partner, what is the provider, product, policy, insurer, insurer name, the loss location, claims, accident date, and so on. Okay, so uh, going back, going back here, when I I can I can load that data here when I go here and I will uh, load my data. So when I try to upload the load data here, it will ask me to map the map the entities here. So I have to kind of quickly map the entities. Oh, sorry, this is the product. And this is insurance uh, provider. Now this is the uh, property graph, right? So I will also add some. So the CSV has some properties. So I have created the map the entities with the what ontology I have, and now I need to also map some of the properties which I will do like the insurer name here, and then there is uh, insurer loss location. So the type of claims there are claims information such as accident date. Uh, you have loss amount and you have um, claim. So when I do this and I say again I create DB, what it will do is it will go and load this data into into new project. It will it will it will use the same schema and create create a graph uh, based on the relationships you have decided you have created it. the the same schema is, is here I'll, like with the same schema which comes on here and this is the data which I have loaded so I have I have around 200, 200 plus records uh, which you know which will uh, which would be which I can query on now since I have this graph here and I and I will just zoom in a little bit to kind of get the sense of it. So here, uh, what we are doing is data is loaded into Neo4j, and we are using libraries like NeoViz to kind of do the visualization here. And you can see, you can see that you can see the graph uh, and, the, and the relationships coming up. You can see what is what are the different products, what are the different uh, who has raised the claim, uh, and uh, what what is the claim number, what is the I'm, I'm putting all the data here, what is the policy number, and so on. And on this, right, what what we can do is we can uh, now we can go and query. Right? If you want to ask some quick questions, like I'll just some questions so that I avoid some typing here. So I can just like what is the list of list of all the insurance providers provided the data, and it will give you that 
give you that list of all the insurance provider. Now, uh, so so yeah, so these are like the three insurance provider. I can go and ask some um, some multi of questions which will give me like what is the what is the highest policy, which is the policy has the highest number of claims and so on. So this in at at the back of this is is a GPT three point five turbo model uh, from using the uh, Azure Open AI services where we are uh, kind of done some prompts and I will quickly uh, show you the prompts as well. So we are putting some, uh, we, are, we can add some instructions here. Like for example, you can, uh, these are a few of the instructions which you can add uh, so that you know, you are, uh, when you're trying to do a, do a Q and A, you know, you have, you have a proper instructions as to how the model should behave, how the model uh, should go. And then you can add some examples here as well. Like for example, you can add like the other questions and they're like questions and cipher queries, which I have prepared. I can I can add it here and I can say finish. So what it gives is it gives a context to this particular uh, chat so that you know it can it can uh, it can not deviate and it doesn't doesn't kind of uh, go offline as to what what it has to do. So at the, at, at the back end, as I said, there is there is this uh, GP 3.5 Turbo model, and it gives it uh, since it's a foundational model. We are not trained it on anything else. That's the reason we have to give some prompts here as as an as an example as a few short learning for the model to understand what it has, how it has to create the cycle queries and so on. Alternatively, we can you know we can train we can train some models which are specific to you know uh, with the question and answering model. And that model can serve a purpose here where, you know, you don't need to do a prompt as well because that model will be trained on uh, the, the, the Q&A and the separate queries. That way we can we can utilize a pre-trained model here, uh, I mean, the fine-tuned model here as well. So, yeah, so this is the this is what we had uh, uh, pretty much. Uh, we are, if there are any questions or anything, I'm pretty much open to it. Yeah, uh, do, do uh, send across any questions. I think there's one question. Uh, in context of plain importing, what is the benefit or Neo4j importer tool? Uh, so, in, okay. in the context of, yeah, how, how is this yeah. beneficial over Neo4j importer? So, this we, what we have done is we have uh, we can we can do that, but we have a, when you when you go here and allow me allow me to go back here, right? So, this is based this is based basically what we are trying to do here is yes, we can use a Neo4j importer as well. But this is a wrapper where we can you can define any kind of a domain. So since we are like giving a, a option of you know creating the synthetic data as well, so that the SME can visualize that data. Here, defining the domain becomes very important uh, because you know you can tomorrow you want to do a drug drug interaction, you can put here as a drug drug interaction, and then you can put the nodes as like genes, variants, and so on. And it will it will create as you the uh, not you not only you will be able to create the ontology for it you will be able to see the synthetic data as well. So yeah, uh, that 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 is one advantage of it. You can go across businesses and kind of you know, use this tool for you know different different things. And loading the data, yes, you can you can. Uh, what we have done is we have loaded the we're loading the CSV. We are we are using the we, we have the pipeline which will convert it from a JSON file. We are putting the data into the into the new project. That's 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 the process we are currently following. Thanks, thanks, Ashwin. And yeah, I, I think just to add, uh, I think this prompt that you showed, though this was a simple example, we can yeah. really get a complex prompt, especially for one of the claims yeah. example. We can we can actually do very complex things, uh, find co relationships, and then uh, the second part of it, when we go to uh, the th outcomes beyond search, things like drug drug mm -hmm. interaction, we can get very complex relationships. Yeah. Uh, map in cipher queries i think that's where using llms to generate cipher sql that's the uh, i would say advantage of, of this uh, one question yeah. from divya is uh, how do we import unstructured data are there options to map using some prompts uh, so i can quickly talk about it in the interest of time uh, divya, i think uh, here this was focused on structure because this is the middle piece of the, of it but we also have a separate offering on called auto kg which can take unstructured data find entities relationships based on an ontology and generate the graph so that is a different approach to it uh, again it is finding uh, like here it is mapping your data sources to them here it uh, data sources to fields for structure unstructured data it will be more around uh, map finding those entities relations and then mapping to an ontology uh so that's anything you want to add yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's exactly. I mean, just to add to that, uh, what you mentioned, Raj, yes, uh, we have we have that offering as well, where we are 
where we have used an EHR data to extract the entities and then convert it into a, convert it into a, a knowledge graph, where which can be based on ontology as well. So you can define what entities you want and relationships, and then you can you know place use the same tool with the AutoKG as a tool to kind of uh, pre pre use the AutoKG and then load the load the load the knowledge graph using that. Use this ontology and you can go and check using the same interface. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think we'll just take one more question. Can Neo4j importer tool uh, be able to load nested JSON data? So I, I, I haven't played much with the tool, but uh, I think here you are mapping nested data. Uh, so do you know that, Uh Yeah, uh, we do have nested data. The JSON which has been created is, is, a, is, a, is a nested data. So we can, I think we have, I, I have, to have not explored much, but I think we can, we can do that in this in, the, in our case the json was a very structured json we have a like uh, csv is converted into a json and then uh, we are loading it so yeah but just so one yeah. more thing to watch out is i mean what we have done is the json is the ontology so json is not the data data is coming from a sql yeah. and we, we could generate queries using large language models to import the data so this was yeah. a basic example but the large language model uh, would actually uh, understand your data model and generate the query and uh, import data with the mapping. So it is we are not loading data using JSON. We are creating the ontology with JSON and using that as a reference to load data and you, using yes. the power of large language models to understand the data model, understand the ontology and combine it to load data. I think that difference is very important to uh, specify. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I think I've gone through most of the questions. Okay, uh, Taylor has one more. Uh, that is, if there's a GitHub link for Neo for NeoGen AI, so we have not yet open sourced this. This is something we, because this is this actually came as a customer discussion. So we actually have we package this as an offering. So uh, yeah, let us look back uh, uh, on the multiple hurdles for that, but we can uh, get back to you, uh, uh, Neo for your community on that. We definitely want to contribute on. Uh, to the community in, in some of these areas. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that those those were the questions uh, on the chat. Uh, I hope this session was uh, helpful. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Shiv, and thanks for the organizing team. Uh, uh, if there are no other questions, I think I think we are uh, anyway over time. Uh, thanks, thanks everybody for for attending the session, and do let us know any feedback uh, even offline or email or LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.